His work with the Tragically Hip has earned 17 Juno Awards, a SOCAN National Achievement Award, a coveted place on Canada's Walk of Fame, and an appointment to the Order of Canada. The Hips guitarist Paul Langlois is set to release a new album with the Paul Langlois Band July 14th. It's called Guess What? And guess what? Paul Langlois joins me. Paul, how are you? I'm doing well, Dana. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm excited to be talking to you. This is great. I've been listening to you my whole life, and now I'm so glad to see that you're making music again. We've missed your guitar skills. And you know what? I'm kind of feeling Gord Downey coming through you on this album. I've been listening all day. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he comes through me a lot. I feel like um, I think of him so often. And I think of things like, what would he think of this? Not necessarily the record, but I I thought that with the record too. What would Gord... Gordon would be happy for me. He just wanted me to be happy. It was almost one of his main goals. <laughs> and so you played with the hip for what was it, thirty four years? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you time. guys were you guys were really tight, and you had to be good friends to be playing together and keep it going for that long. This new band, the Paul Langlois Band. Do you have a good relationship with all the members, and do you think you're going to be able to make music for a long time with these guys? Uh, I would say yes. It, you know, certainly in the hip, it was a, our biggest achievement because, you know, we got pretty popular and we all were trying to, you know, have personal lives. And there's a lot of webs you have to get through. And, and sort of our biggest achievement, really, after all that, was that we remained great friends. It was always the most important thing. And we learned more and more about communicating with each other at the right times and and not at the wrong times, all that kind of stuff. And I do feel the same way about these guys. I mean, I picked this band because they're buddies already. And I played with them. I, I know them to be really good musicians. But I know their personalities almost better than their music. And yeah, a lot of laughs and and like so far so good. I loved recording with them. We're going to play a few festivals this summer. We've done maybe, we've only really done, I think, maybe three gigs over the last year or so. And loved every one of them. A lot of laughs. They're mutually supportive of each other. This is what you need to be in a band. You know, Mm -hmm. it's... It's why so many bands don't work out, because it's just so hard to get along. I mean, they're tough times, right? Especially when you start. It's got to be the right combination of personalities. You know, there's got to be a kind of a glue person. There's got to be a couple of opinionated people that bonk heads because you're trying to be creative. And, you know, it's very complicated. It's like a five-way marriage. It it wasn't hip. And with this, it's Paul Langlois band. So, you know, they call me boss and stuff. Yeah. But... Um, no, I like these guys. And, and if the band didn't exist, I'd be hanging out with them anyway. You know, they live here and spend most of my time in Kingston. And so, no, I'm very happy with the, this collection of freaks. But it's got to be a different dynamic for you, too, being front and center now. Yeah, way more pressure. I was uh, talking to Gord Sinclair, who he put out a solo record a couple months ago. So a couple months ahead of me. And I'm very happy with him. And I really love his record. And, but we were talking the other day because we played the surprise 60th for good friends and um, oh, cool. You know, we were both saying, God, it's just so much more uncomfortable being front and center. You know, it's it's like I prefer not being front and center. I, I much prefer when Gord Downey was front and center and we'd be off to the side and, you know, playing part of the team, loving it, you know, doing our best. But it's very different to sort of stand in the center and be the singer and kind of be the host. A little bit of well, what am I going to say? What do I say? You know, it's kind of more pressure. I dread it way more, like if I have a gig coming up. But as soon as the first note is hit, I get comfortable and I actually enjoy it. Uh, the during and the after. I just hate the before. You've had two solo albums too. So yeah. that was Fix This Head and Not Guilty. Is this the same <laughs> band that played on, on those albums? It is not. No. Um, Fix This Head was just me. I was a shy person. I was just kind of, you know, screwing around, really. I wondered whether I could play drums, so that's why I booked a studio, our studio, for a weekend once. And and then I just I went from there, and so I did a few weekends, and uh, but it was just me in there, just me and the engineer. Awkward, really. 
but got it done, and that was just me. And then Not Guilty was a band, and not the same band. Okay. Um, Robbie Baker was in my band for Not Guilty, and he was great. And that was a big favor on his part to me and meant a lot to me. And a couple other guys uh, that were good friends as well, still are. And no, just with this one, I kind of went around the horn a bit. I didn't ask Robbie. It's been 10 years since then. I'm still good friends with Rob, but he's got a lot on the go. And I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll try a new bunch of guys. And even though I did have fun, and we did do a full tour of, with Not Guilty, 28 shows and 35 nights oh, wow. across Canada and the frozen the frozen depths of Canada oh. the one December. And so, yeah, that was a that was a, a real band and a great bunch of guys. And, and now it's a bunch of guys that I've gotten to know very well since in and around that time. And, and so, uh, yeah, it's a new band and they're really into it. I feel like they have my back in a big way and very enthusiastic and they all want to quit their jobs and, you know, hit the road. But um, I don't necessarily want to hit the road. I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, we're doing four or five festivals this summer. That's enough for me right now. And we'll see, you know, if there's some interest. Maybe we do some more shows down the road a bit. You put this band together. Is this for when you were asked to do the ceremonies for the Canada Summer Games, the closer in Niagara Falls last August? Yes. Yeah, and I was called. It was last August, and it was in the late spring. And someone that was on the sort of entertainment board of the Canada Games said, hey, we got this gig. You wanna, uh, do you have a band? And I said, no. <laughs> uh, well, if you put one together, you could play this gig. And I, I mentioned it to my wife, Joanne, and she was like, you got to do it. And I'm like, yeah, but I got to get a band together. It's just like, it just seems so complicated. She's like, do it. And anyway, so I got the band together and we rehearsed for that show. But as we were rehearsing, I was realizing... God, this is more fun than I remember. You know, not doing it. <laughs> yeah, and um, so I was having fun, and then I just started thinking, maybe I could try writing some more songs, and we could I could record with these guys. And sure enough, that's what happened. Was we booked. I had a deadline, which was the key, going in November seventh, and it was like mid September, and I had maybe one and a half songs. So I spent uh, the next few weeks just writing songs and sending them to the guys in the band and saying, what do you think of this? And they all, you know, they really like the songs and they've changed the songs in some cases, like way faster or heavier or whatever. They just all added um, really special things and it just felt like a group. And so that's how it happened. So you wrote this in a few months and I hear that you recorded it in eight days. Yeah, in eight days. And, and you know, those eight days... These guys all work various, uh, you know, we got a firefighter, drummers as a construction company. And, you know, I mean, everyone's busy. Yeah. Greg is, works six days a week. And so not everyone could get the full eight days off at all. So there was only three out of those eight days that we were all there. Eight day, wow. days and nights. So they were able to stay over. And we got it all done in those three days because I wanted everyone to be playing at the same time and not sort of have guys come in and overdub and that kind of thing. So right. um, we got it all done live. And, you know, we didn't uh, change a lot. I had to change one vocal, but I was playing guitar and singing at the same time we just sort of set it up so that you know so that it sounded good but and we were well enough rehearsed that uh it was like okay this is this is working and there's something about a band playing together live off the floor as they say and that's what the hip always did and uh we did that here and and that's uh, something i'm most happy and proud about so how we hear it on the album is how we're going to hear it if we see you in Aurelia at the Mariposa Folk Festival or the Greenway Jam in Kingsville, it'll basically sound the same. It should, yeah, yeah. Hopefully as good or better, I hope. Yeah, because we just played it all just like that on the record. So that's the plan going forward. And people don't really have to wait to hear some of this until July 14th because the first track, It Matters to Me, and another one, Peels, is Sleep Backwards, which is really rock and tune. Uh, those are already <laughs> on the online outlets. Yes, yeah. Uh, which is neat. Uh, you know, I didn't, ch I left choosing the single up to other people. Well, the whole band left it to other people, record company and management. And, and they were like, it matters to me. And I was like, okay. You know, it's kind of the thing now. This changes all the time, as you would know, too. 
So now you release a single and you try and get it on the radio and that kind of thing. And then a month later, you release a second sort of online single. And then a month later, your record comes out. That seems to be the pattern that I've noticed. And, and that's what we're doing here. And, you know, Peel's Sleep Backwards, it wasn't really meant to be titled that. It was That was more of a placeholder title. And then I never changed it. Oh. Um, so, so I'm just going with it because I have no idea what the song's about either. I have no idea what the song or the title is about. Oh, it's just random it, thoughts? I mean, well, yeah, it was kind of, feels I kind of know what it's about, but it kind of almost ruins it. Like, I was just picturing, like, uh, you know, a, a young actor, and he's like, he's going to the spa, and he's doing all these silly He's not a star yet. Like, he has so much more work to do, but he just seems... It's almost like a pretend son or something I have, and I'm just like, hey, just just watch me. You gotta... You know, you can't get out of the spas and get on to the work you're supposed to be doing. And um, I think I just started with that kind of concept, and I wanted to write a fast, kind of punky song. And uh, so the words just kind of came out. And then I temporarily called it Peels of Sleep Backwards just because I realized one day that Peels is sleep backwards and um then i left it there and then i just didn't get around to changing it never came up with anything that was in my mind better and uh so just left it but it's a fun little song there's certain uh people that are like have told me you know they like it you know it's, I love it's it. really quick yeah oh dear yeah uh, it's, thanks a lot yep it's fast and it's it gets you awake that's for sure and then you have <laughs> is the don't leave me brother is that talking about gore downey yeah i mean pretty much I, I mean i think i was trying to have it be anyone's thought process emotional process about losing uh, someone close which i had never been through uh, luckily enough but it certainly um it it stopped my whole world and uh so it's just uh yeah i mean it's it's um uh, inspired by that experience which was a long heavy road for a couple of years but that included our last tour and that was i mean the fact that he got that done that we got that done is just um something no one can ever take that away from us that was the best ever so yeah it's just kind of reflecting on on losing a friend and the friend that i lost was gordon Okay. What would you say is your favorite track off the album? Um, guess what does something for me? It's the last song in the record, and it's the title of the record. And it's sort of the most um, out there song to me. It's it's kind of a little, it's quite different. It's funny because we, we had a quick dinner in Bath. The, the, we were at the Bath House, which is a hip studio. Yep. Bath is half hour your side of Kingston. And... We are out for dinner, and we had tried Guess What in the afternoon, and so the, just the band's out for dinner, a new little spot, open the bath, and, okay, we're going to try Guess What when we get back. You know, we'll just let's do it three or four times, and we'll get closer, and uh, so we discussed it a bit. And anyway, we got back to bath, and three of my buddies were there, and they hadn't texted me they were coming, but they were there, and um, just to sort of check out what we were doing. So I was picturing them in the control room while we were, doing guess what and it was just like i was picturing them like pretty bored they've never heard the song before so i'm like oh they're so bored this is this is brutal i'm gonna take this up a notch and and so it's sort of me trying to make the song lift more and so i'm just singing kind of out of my range and just really trying to step on it and it turned out everyone liked it and so we just kept it so it, that's more that's the, kind of the most jammy kind of song the rest of them were kind of finished oh i love stories like that is there any other stories for any of the tracks on the uh, rest of the album that was the most jammy with the band um there's a song 638 main which is actually the address of uh, the studio and it's uh slow and different very acoustic key so it's very different from the rest of the stuff on the record and i made that up on the spot without lyrics and I just started singing honestly I tried it like probably three times but I wasn't writing anything down and I was just picturing myself what happens in the studio like when you stay over because we had years and years of it and we had the bathhouse for a long time so we'd always stay over and you know sometimes you just kind of it's late at night and you kind of forget what you even recorded that day and okay what's up for tomorrow and you're trying to write either music or lyrics you sort of get in this fog like it's like what day is it even 
you know, is it Wednesday and we're here till Saturday? Like it, you sort of lose track. And so right. that song, I'm just, I was just making it up on the spot talking about, I said it in a bar. It's really, it's set in the studio and I'm just chasing a song and, and singing about that at the time. Like, uh, you know, it's starting, I think the song is, is getting there. And, you know, anyway, it's, it was an interesting experiment, and I think I just got lucky that it worked for me and for the band. Because you got to believe in a song. So if, if I did that and didn't, like, it, any of it rang icky, I wouldn't go with it. But the, the song seemed to ring true for me and for those guys, and so we just, we left it. Awesome. So that's 638 Maine, and that'll be out on July 14th with the rest of the album called Guess What? Paul Langlois, thank you so much for taking the time with me, going through hip memories, and of course, talking about the new album that is dropping on July 14th. I really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate it too, Dana, and thanks for having me, and um, it's uh, great chatting with you.